Joining me right now is the Bonson Group founder and managing partner, David Bonson. David, it's always a pleasure. Thanks very much for joining us this weekend. Your thoughts on what you heard from Jay Powell. Do you agree that the inflationary numbers we're seeing are temporary? The problem with it is that there's nuances. There are commodity prices that I think are definitely transitory. We already saw lumber go way, way up and then is now dropped, I think, 65 percent. So there's different stories that kind of confuse the broader narrative. What I believe has systemic inflation in it are housing prices. And I don't say that as a good thing. A lot of people like the fact that their house price keeps going higher and higher. But the affordability issue is a big problem. Overall, though, I believe excessive government spending is disinflationary. And that's the story of Japan over 30 years now. And I think that Chairman Powell is, is stuck talking about a few different things at once. And the whole story is getting very confused. And the government has got to right size its spending. So, so what does all of this mean in terms of policy? Do you think the Federal Reserve is going to start talking about tapering more aggressively during the Jackson Hole meeting, the annual Federal Reserve powwow in August in Jackson Hole? Or do you think it's a 2022 affair? When are rates going to start moving up in your view? Yes, it was 10 years ago at Jackson Hole that they started talking about doing QE2. And I think it's going to be Jackson Hole this mm. year that they start talking about ending this QE. But I don't think they'll start to taper it till later in the year. But I don't believe it matters. I don't think markets will ultimately care. And I say ultimately because I'm sure there will be enhanced volatility. There'll be traders that get whipsawed. There'll be algorithmic guys that get all you know beat up and so forth. But ultimately, markets like certainty. And this QE thing lingers over markets with an uncertainty about it while providing no organic or tangible economic benefit. So tell me how you invest then after all that you've heard and seen uh, your expectations for the macro story lead you to allocate capital. How? We really want to be as agnostic as we can about what the Fed's going to do. The Fed is now hyper-involved in the American economy. They're hyper-involved in equity markets. But what we want are companies with great free cash flow generation, with balance sheets that can withstand various uh, problems that may come up. We don't think that it's going to be an easy ride for a few years. We don't want to buy the very high PE stocks that are, frankly, often very popular. So we like dividend growers across the a lot of sectors. We're not only concentrated into energy or financials, but we want to be there. But what we want is bottom-up companies that have the ability to withstand things. And if we get more inflationary pressures, Maria, we like the pricing power. Procter Gamble, McDonald's, 3M, these companies yeah. have the ability to grow their prices with inflation. Those are the types of names yeah. we're investing in. What, what about the potential headwinds coming at us if uh, President Biden gets his economic policy through and that three and a half trillion dollar uh, spending plan? He's talking about taking the capital gains rate up to 43.4 percent, uh, higher taxes on uh, many Americans, most Americans, as well as a corporate tax rate that's going higher. Does that trigger a stock market sell off? Well, it's interesting because they talked about a $2 trillion infrastructure bill. Now it's $600 billion. They talked about a $6 billion spending plan, now a $6 trillion. Now it's $3.5 trillion. So he can talk about a 43% capital gain rate all he wants. They don't have the votes to do it, and it's not going to happen. He may get some higher taxes somewhere, and I don't think that's good. It's not what the economy needs. However, I don't believe that the market thinks, nor is our system of government set up to allow them to get those really egregious tax increases. The corporate tax rate is the one that will hurt all Americans the most because the companies will pass on that cost to their customers, obviously. We know this. It's Economics 101. Yet I suspect they're going to get the corporate rate up to about 25 percent, still lower than what he had proposed. All right. We will just leave it there. David, it's great to see you this weekend. Thanks very much. We'll keep watching all of that. Thanks. David Bonson joining us. We'll see you soon, David.